All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. We got George Bloom, realtor, Jacksonville, Florida, over here with us again. So, George, welcome to the podcast. Hey, Mr. Ty, thanks for having me on again. Looking forward to it. It's always a good time when you get this podcast going. Yes, absolutely. And this podcast will be a lot about financial decision making and needs versus wants. So, Starting this off, George, talk about needs versus wants and some of your own personal examples. That I think needs versus wants is specific and custom to each individual, to whatever job they have, to whatever situation in life they're going through at the moment. It is that. And depending upon who you are and the situation that you currently find yourself in and the direction in life that you're going, your needs and wants, they're always changing. And I look at somebody like you, right, George, you're making big money, man. You're doing really well for yourself. You're living that six figure a year lifestyle. And yet you're choosing to drive a Volkswagen Jetta when you could clearly probably go buy something luxurious. Talk about that, man. That's a very smart decision right there. Yeah. For example, I'm a car guy, I love cars. I'd love to go get the Porsche McCann, no problem. Can mm -hmm. I afford it? Yeah, not a problem at all. Is it gonna really you know, bust into my budget? Probably not at all. However, my need versus one, I have a 2013 black Volkswagen Jetta, leather interior and a decent little car. It gets me to point A to point B. Mm -hmm. You know, 33 miles a gallon efficient. I don't have to worry about the car breaking down. It's in excellent shape. I take good care of it. I take it in to get it fixed, it's a couple hundred bucks. I take my Porsche McCann in to get it fixed, it's gonna be probably a couple thousand bucks. Mm -hmm. So needs versus want, do I need that Porsche or do I want it? And yeah. It's a want, not a need. And you're somebody, you're in your early 30s, you're really promoting that long-term decision-making right there. And because you're doing that, you see that in other areas of your life as well. I mean, a lot of the clothes that you buy um, they're, they're not necessarily luxury brand clothes. Like, how are you doing a lot of your clothes shopping? I actually uh, do a lot of import-export with Bulgaria in terms yeah. of suits and things like that. I usually get most of my suits and everything from Bulgaria. So for those of you that don't know, George has a lot of family that lives in Bulgaria. So when he says he's getting a lot of his stuff at a discounted price, it's because that's exactly what he's doing by getting clothes from Bulgaria. Correct. Correct. I have family over there, and when I go over there, the uh, conversion w rate for the Bulgarian lev, their currency, versus the U.S. currency, it's, it's amazing. You can get a loaf of bread over there for 25 cents, mm. and mm -hmm. usually when I buy a nice suit over there, I'm paying about $250 for a really nice custom-made suit with, you know, I'm picking out the colors and everything like that. So, you know, I do a couple trips over there a year, and usually I'm bringing back a decent amount of clothes with me as well. And... Do I need it to say Versace or Armani or Gucci or Louis Vuitton? I don't need that, you know. I got a great deal on a suit, it's quality, and it could be probably even better quality than those name brand suits. It, it is a very nice quality suit that you're wearing. And if you were to convert that into its American equivalent, you'd be paying a couple thousand dollars for the amount of suits that you're getting for, from Bulgaria for just a couple hundred dollars right there. Correct, and I think that's smart shopping and just being efficient with your money. I, absolutely. And, you know, you, you talk a little bit about vacation spending splurges is really because of the credit card interest. Talk about that point you wanted to review. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of people out there, they have the credit card debt. They have those certain things that are going on. I'm besides the mortgage on my house, I'm 100% debt free besides that. Mm -hmm. I have credit cards, everything. I pay them off every single month. I don't use that as a, hey, let me take this money and do that. However, Say you want to go on vacation or you want to go do something and you have $10,000 in credit card debt, you're going to spend $2,000 on something. Mm -hmm. That $2,000 that you just spent on your vacation or a home improvement that maybe was a not a necessity but just a want, now that $2,000 is going to go ahead and turn into you know three or $4,000 with all that interest that's going to occur for that money that you could have paid it off. Talk about the mortgage debt though. Like, Is mortgage debt really debt or is more of an investment that over the course of 5, 10, 15 years is, is actually a surplus of money for you? I do agree with that with the surplus. Uh, for example, if you have a 30-year mortgage on a property, just say it's a $100,000 property, you're going to be spending probably about 150000 bucks or more on that property. For example, I just refinanced from a 30-year loan to mm -hmm. a 15-year mm -hmm. loan 
mm-hmm. for 2.75 interest rate. So over the term of that 15 years, I saved about $87,000. And you drive your principal down very fast as Correct. well too, which is very underrated because the faster you drive your principal down really is the more money you're putting in your own pocket. Professional advice and how you respond. Budgeting, coaching could save you thousands of dollars. Talk about that viewpoint you wanted to go into there. So, for example, knowing the right people, especially at the right time, for example, professionals that are not in your profession. You don't want, you know, if everyone that you know is in your profession, you want to find someone outside your profession that maybe is an accountant or maybe mm-hmm. a financial advisor or things like that. If you're an engineer, you're not a financial advisor. Mm-hmm. You're not an expert in budgeting or money management or anything like that. In fact, you could actually be very bad at that. Exactly. That's why it's good to maybe outsource and look for those help. There's tons of free resources out there to get help on budgeting. There's books, there's Amazon, Mm -hmm. there's Mr. Bobby Ty who can coach Mm -hmm. you through a certain amount of things. So (laughs) there's resources out there for people and I think it's up to the individual to take that step and be motivated to get that help when they see that they need help or take that professional advice from people instead of Know, jumping on things when it could be a bad financial decision for them and hurt them in the long run. I, I agree with that there. And um, the, you sent me a very interesting video of Jeff Bezos, probably some five to 10 years ago, where he was just going to work as a multi billionaire, just driving in like what kind of car was it? Honda Civic. Just driving a Honda Civic into work. It was worth about $8 billion at the time. Yeah, yeah. And he just basically said it's a very good car, gets really good gas mileage, and I feel very comfortable in it right now. That, that's exactly how I feel with my Volkswagen Jetta. No way anywhere I can compare it to Jeff Bezos at the moment. Right, um, right. However, my Jetta does just fine. I don't need to go buy you know, a fancy car and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. And like I know... In my life, I'll go through times where I'm spending more money than I should or times where I'm saving a good amount of money. And if I look at my recent finance list recently, because now I'm trying to save more money and be more financially responsible, I cut down my Verizon bill by $50. Um, Both of my Comcast plans that I have, I've cut those down by $50. Um... I cut out a life coach that I had that was $200 a month. Um, My food expense bill, I've chopped down from, I'm not gonna say the numbers because I was paying way too much for food on a monthly basis, but I brought that down about 25% right there. I got down from two gym memberships down to one gym membership and I removed my MMA membership and I'm only gonna continue with personal training rather than having that actual gym membership. And I have about, Three other things on this list that I'm working on so that over the next two to three weeks, I can remove them and then I got a stretch goal for the end of the year to get into a Tesla so I no longer have to pay for gasoline moving forward. And those are some things that I've done on my end right there. Bobby, hey, round of applause for that, my friend. I appreciate that. Nice move on that. Yeah. And and what's great about that, you took up you took that upon yourself yeah. to make that choice to go in a more financial positive direction. Yeah. So I just calculated a little couple rough numbers. You know, out of all those things you said, I'm just you know between five and seven hundred and fifty bucks. You probably just chopped that off a month just by sitting down and being a responsible individual, going through those finances, looking at all those things, and looking at those options. You were able to save five to seven hundred fifty dollars a month. And let me also say this on top of that. I took the advice of a realtor here in Jacksonville who showed me how to refinance my mortgages, gave me some connections in the banking industry. And on those mortgages I refinance, I think on each mortgage I'm saving now about $200 per month. So over the course of four mortgages, that's about $800 now I'm paying less just by refinancing on those mortgages. So that's great. Yeah, so just stepping back, hearing the advice of you, going to refinance those mortgages, taking the initiative myself, cutting down on some of those cable bills, cutting down on some of those other bills that I have out there. You know, it's a few thousand dollars, about $1,500 roughly that I'm just gonna put back in my pocket moving forward. And that's money management right there. That is great, Bobby. And I really, 
want everyone to kind of take that as some good advice. Mm -hmm. How can they sit back on the couch, look at their apps on their phone, everything's digital nowadays, see how you can cut back on your expenses and utilize that cash flow. Turn that $1,500 that you just saved per month now, now Bobby, add that other things up and the saving on the mortgage, you could pretty much have enough funds to get another property, go invest in another property and create that $1,500 into maybe $3,000 a month. I, I could, and that's part of the game plan, right? This $1,500 that I'm gonna save each month, let it stockpile for a bunch of months, you know, maybe six, seven, eight, nine months, I don't know. Let it stockpile and then six, seven, eight, nine months from now, reevaluate what I have going on, reassess my situation, and then go forward with that, that decision on whatever it is I wanna make. Maybe I just wanna keep saving the money, actually. Maybe I wanna go partner with somebody and make another investment, Airbnb investment or something of that nature there. I don't know, but. Forward positive thinking, Bobby. I love where your head's at. Yeah, just making sure I'm analyzing things, reevaluating re things constantly, and being proactive. And one of the things that's important about being proactive is that when you're being proactive, you're really getting in control of the game. You're not playing from behind. You're just staying in control. And I think as um, we look at one of the last notes you have on here, commitment and following through, making a change to grow financially. I think that's a great point you brought up, Bobby. So making that change and that commitment to actually make these choices and stick with it like example, you just sat down and went through all those things with the cable bills and all this, saving yeah. you know a little less than a thousand dollars a month there. However, you can easily go back and flip the switch and actually keep paying those things, or go back in that, or you know what? Right. Oh, I like driving to this gym. Let me pay a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You've made that choice to save that money and to make that commitment to keep that at a rate that you're comfortable with. Talk about social status and image. So social status and image. I believe, you know, dress to impress, look professional. Mm -hmm. I When I leave my house, I try to go out in a suit or at least with a sports coat on, mm -hmm. looking professional. You know, nonverbal communication is huge mm -hmm. you know, around the world. You know, 93% mm -hmm. of all communication is nonverbal. Right. So, important to always look good. And you can look good by going to JCPenney's and getting a $10 on sale button up shirt, you know, whatever. Depending on your profession, it, it, it all depends what kind of look you're going for and things like that. We had uh, Jeremy Odom came on the podcast a few days ago, and that's exactly what he does. He likes to go to Ross. He likes to go to Marshalls. He likes to go to those discount stores, and that's where he likes to find, you know, Ralph Lauren, Tommy Hilfiger clothes for nice polos for, you know, between 5 and $20 to wear to work. I mean, he has four children. He's thinking long term. Shopping responsible. Yeah, shopping responsibly. He wants to make sure that, you know, whatever direction he's going in with his family, that they're well taken care of and that he's being frugal with his money. So it's a great point of view there. What what do you mean by social image though, George? Like social image and social status. Do sometimes the people try too hard to do that when they could do it in a more simple way? For example, you know, going back to Jeff Be Bezos and his Honda Civic. Yeah. Um, going back to me and my Volkswagen Jetta. Mm -hmm. you know, social status, I see lots of realtors driving Porsche McCann's and everything, and you can go up on Northeast Florida Association of Realtors and see how many deals they're closing. Mm -hmm. These people are closing 12 deals a year, spending 45% of their income on their car. Mm -hmm. I think you should, maximum you should be spending on a car is maybe 5% of your income mm -hmm. versus 45, 50% of your income on a car and renting an apartment. Those are just not smart financial decisions. So social status, when you really compare it and look at those things, you're thinking, well, I mean, she may be driving a Porsche, but why is she spending 45% of her money on a Porsche and living in an apartment? Yeah. So I don't look at that as a social mm -hmm. status being higher than myself. I look at that as being lower because of those low financial decisions that she's making. And yeah, financial decisions, they can always be improved. And I think that's the important thing of, you were very proactive in wanting to do this podcast with me today because you know that you can always change your financial route as long as you're being proactive towards it. And I'm sure you have a couple people in your life right now that are struggling financially. And that's what has kind of brought you to want to kind of set this uh, awareness point and kind of give them this podcast here. Correct. I know a few individuals going through some financial struggles right now, and I've tried to give my advice. And I think you've even mentioned a few things you've given some advice to some of those individuals as well. And there's a limit on how much you can give to somebody because you can't really help someone really that much unless they want to help themselves and improve upon themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, George, what's, 
What's the game plan for the rest of the day? Getting ready to wrap this podcast up. You're a very proactive individual. What do you have going on the rest of the day? It's 7.30 in the morning right now, Bobby. I have three more appointments to go to today. Wanted to get an early start on this podcast. I'm going to finish those appointments. Uh, going to hit Bob in my garage. You know, mm-hmm. don't have a gym membership anymore during COVID, so I actually bought a few uh, pieces of equipment to put in my garage, recommended by you. Mm-hmm. So I'll hit the Bob for about an hour and a half, um, do some jump ropes, some physical exercise in the garage, try to stay healthy because, you know, financially stable, but also want to be mentally and physical stable as well. Absolutely. And George, I appreciate you coming back on this podcast. Looking forward to have you on here next week as well, too. Much appreciated, Bobby. Hey, have a good morning.